Hello, my name is David. I'm a health coach at Partner MD at Richmond in the Forest Avenue location. And thanks for joining me today. I wanted to talk to you a minute about calories. You hear a lot about calories, uh, how many calories are in this food or that food, and um, that's not worth the calories, or you know, that's going to put some extra calories in your on your day. And it's important to think about that. I mean, it it uh, calories are not irrelevant; they're very important. In fact, I have my clients track them sometimes just to monitor how many calories they're getting on a given day relative to how much exercise they're doing. It can be helpful. It often helps us discover the best foods just by, by tracking those calories. We find out the foods that are lower in calories and better for us often. So nothing wrong with that, but I wanna to propose today that um, all calories are not created equal. So it may be helpful not to just think about calories alone. We often hear phrases like, you know, weight loss is as simple as calories in, calories out. You know, it's that easy. Well, maybe uh, on a bank balance it is, but when it comes to human behavior, it's a little more complicated. I've, I've joked with my clients before that saying that is kind of like saying that uh, plane crashes are can be reduced to uh, lift up versus gravity down, right? As long as you make sure the lift exceeds the gravity, you won't crash, right? Simple. Give me a pilot's license, right? <laughs> no, it's a lot more complicated to keep a plane in the air than just... Uh, the balance between up and down, right? And similarly, it's a lot more difficult to uh, have an ideal diet and eat well for health than just tracking the number of uh, calories that you're taking in. So also we don't eat calories, we eat food. Uh, so understanding what foods are best for you, I think is a little more helpful. So I'd like to propose a different kind of a math today. Uh, we're not gonna do a lot of math. I was never that great at it anyway. So um, instead of just thinking of calories in versus calories out, let's think about some other variables that are important when it comes to food. And I want to propose a new, a new mathematical kind of formula for you. It's not very complicated. Don't worry. I'm going to share my screen here real quick and show you the nutrient ratio. Okay. Now we're not even going to get deep into numbers here as far as actually calculating stuff. I just want you to think about this conceptually. When it comes to evaluating a food, looking at the nutrition label is important, of course, and you can still look at the calories. If you look at this as a fraction with calories on the bottom, that's the denominator, right? So the calories are still going to be taken into account. But what's on top of that? What makes the number higher uh, is the, are the nutrients. Okay, so nutrients are things like calcium, magnesium, vitamins, things that you know are good for your body. The information that we're programming ourselves with, not just the fuel that we're putting in our tanks, right? So the nutrients are important. So I, you don't even have to necessarily, we're not gonna get too in depth today on uh, exact amounts, just tally up the nutrients in your mind. Are there, are there a lot of nutrients in this? You know, the amounts, generally speaking, the percentages, how's that looking? And you might even subtract off of that what I'm calling noxious, which are damaging things. Um, it helps to remember, I think, to have the same letter. So it's nutrients minus noxious, right? So anything that could be harmful to you, something like maybe sugar. Sugar doesn't really do much for you from a health standpoint. Um, you can create sugar out of pretty much anything in your body. So <clears throat> uh, protein and carbohydrate and uh, fat and that type of thing. So sugar is not necessarily something you have to take in and it often harms that might be an option that you might subtract off of this to decrease the value of this food or something that's specific to you. Maybe your doctor has told you to reduce saturated fat or watch your cholesterol or so forth. That might be something you'd subtract off the top. And so if you can think of that numerically on top, the higher the number, the more nutrients it has and the less harmful stuff it has in it over top of the calories. So it's kind of like nutrients over calories, right? How much is this food worth? <laughs> nutrient wise relative to the calories. So if something's got a low calorie, lots of nutrients, it's going to be a good food. If it's something's got not many nutrients and lots of calories relative to that, not as good of a, of a food choice. Okay. Let's do a real quick exercise with this. I'm just going to show you, I'm going to scroll down here. Here's vanilla ice cream. We all like ice cream once in a while. Uh, you're not a bad person for eating some ice cream, but let's just look at this, um, this equation, so to speak, or this uh, formula. What are the nutrients? Let's just tally them up. You got some water in ice cream. You know, it's not, this isn't poison necessarily. You got some calcium in there, vitamin A, not very much though, right? The percentages are pretty low. Potassium a little bit, you know, so maybe three, four good things in there overall. Um, there may be some harmful things too, the noxious, right? So sugars, 28 grams, right? In one cup, 
this is one cup of ice cream, vanilla. <laughs> so um, most times I try to keep people's sugars below 20 at the highest on a given day. Um, 28, you've already got more than your daily intake. Glycemic index, and that's just a measure of how fast your blood sugar goes up. It's relatively high on the glycemic index, which makes your, it means it makes your blood sugar go up pretty quickly. It's also got some saturated fat, and you don't always have to monitor that. I mean, you can have a balance, but some people, especially if you have heart disease or a history of that, your doctor may want you to watch that. So that's kind of an iffy one. But if you're to do that sort of math in your head, we've got three or four helpful things and about two or three harmful things. So the, maybe one or two total on top there. And then the calories are 270 calories in a cup. Okay, so now let's, let's apply this same thinking to the same calories, all right? So if you're thinking calories in, calories out, <clears throat> let's get the same approximate calories of spinach. All right? <laughs> this is kind of an obvious one, I guess, spinach versus ice cream, but I just wanna show you how this works. Um, now, to get the same number of calories of spinach, first of all, I'm gonna be eating seven cups of spinach, okay? And right here is a, a picture of one cup of spinach. So imagine seven of those. That's a lot of spinach. It's even hard to eat that much probably without getting full uh, or just getting tired of it. <laughs> so, so right there, you've got a difference in volume. But look at the nutrients in spinach. You've got water, fiber, uh, and this is assuming seven grams. Actually, I think the fiber might be a little higher. It's more like 20 some grams. Fiber, or excuse me, vitamin A, over a thousand percent, the daily value of vitamin A, right? Vitamin C, over a hundred percent. Calcium, over a hundred. Iron, potassium, over a hundred, right? This is calcium is good for bones, muscle contraction, um, all that type of stuff. Iron is good for blood, uh, carrying oxygen through the blood, potassium, good for nerve conduction, avoiding cramping. Vitamin A, beta carotene, lutein is great for eye health, healing. So all these things that are good for your body in there. Um, what is that? 10 things, maybe 10, 10 nutrients on the top of this formula. Maybe one noxious thing, one thing that could be harmful to some people. If you have a history of kidney stones, specifically oxalate based kidney stones, you may want to reduce and not have seven cups of spinach. You may want to, want to watch your intake there, reduce that a little bit, but um, that could be a potential noxious. That's sort of an either or, even if we assume that you still got like eight, nine on top there, and then same number of calories, 280, right? So right there, you've got a higher nutrient ratio in that food. Hope that makes sense. The nutrients minus the noxious over the calories. So overall, we, we can talk more about that in future videos, but I wanted to introduce you to that concept of the nutrient ratio. So you still can count calories if you want, you can still take those into account, but just broadening, um, are thinking a little bit to include information in food, nutrients, things that affect our genes and our health and everything else. Uh, including that in your thinking, I think will be hugely helpful for you. If you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, call your local coach and they can help you set up a diet plan, including these, this type of thinking. So thanks for your time. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.